So how can the ongoing cycle of provocations and reactions on the Korean Peninsula be broken in any way? Our panel weigh in. Very strong panel from Beijing studio. First of all, Victor Gao, who is current affairs commentator, joining us Thank here you. in Beijing. We're also honored to have uh, Jonathan Polak, who is the interim SK South Korean Foundation Chair in Korea Studies at the Center for East Asia Policy Studies. Thank you so much for joining us here in Beijing. Thank you. Meanwhile, in Seoul, South Korea, we are joined by Professor Oh Ying Yu, who is a professor at the Korea University. Meanwhile, in Medford, the U.S., so we have Professor Sun Yong Lee, a Kim Koo Korea Foundation Professor of Korean Studies at Fletcher School, Tufts University. A strong panel with us. The question is, we've seen so many tests since the South Korean president comes into power, the new one. Meanwhile, today we have the latest news of another flying object from north to south, fired at by the south, yet flew back to the north. Um, Mr. Polak, you've been doing work about this subject for decades. Should we be calm right now, or should we be actually working very hard on the possibilities? Well, uh, we have to work hard on the possibilities, but that does not mean that we are uh, at some imminent risk of a major crisis. The surprise here is very much that under the new government in Seoul, one that clearly wanted to try to reopen the door to the North, uh, the North has responded by upping the ante, also upping the ante to China mm. by testing initially uh, a longer range missile uh, on the day that the One Belt, One Road Forum opened. So this, this is a surprise only because one would assume that we want to open these possibilities with the new government. But now President Moon, Moon Jae-in, the new president of South Korea, right. he's going to be very constrained in what he can do. Is there still any window opportunity? Because remember, right after the election, when President new president come into power in South Korea, people are talking about this new window opportunity. Is it still there, Victor, from no, your I perspective? I think uh, the latest uh, conduct by DPRK is very disturbing. Uh, it may not result in uh, immediate conflagration on the Korean Peninsula, but this kind of uh, pattern of provoking uh, the South Korean, the Chinese, the Americans, etc., consistently and repeatedly uh, may actually push the situation over the abyss mm -hmm. any time in the future. And this eventually may result in great disaster. And nobody uh, on this issue seems to have a way to control or contain the situation. China is doing its best, but it has failed to really rein in DPRK and the United States is using right. all kinds of means, military as well as diplomatic, and it is not leading to a magic result. So I think the situation is becoming more and more disturbing, and we need to be on full alert about whether it may take a sudden turn disturbing, for the Disturbing, yes, indeed. But Professor Oh from South Korea, besides we can say disturbing, what else can we do at this point? Well, I think we should take the, uh, the usual measure of uh, alerting people in South Korea and elsewhere in the neighborhood countries that North Korea is now taking a new uh, gesture in terms of stockpiling missiles instead of uh, old conventional arms. So this is a new era of uh, confrontation between the North and South because now North Korea has nuclear capabilities. So this is the beginning of a Cold War of new type in the 21st century East Asia, and that is very dangerous. Well, we're seeing very different views uh, both inside uh, South Korea about what to do, what is the nature of the current thing. Professor Lee, observing from afar and yet knowing what exactly is going on, what do you think? Uh, what does the current crisis mean for the new president in South Korea? I would say the current crisis gives the new South Korean president even a greater incentive to reach out to North Korea for dialogue. Interesting. And I think the South Korean public will support that. There's always been a window of opportunity to return to negotiations because all the powers in the region, including China, Japan, South Korea, the U.S., and Russia, support that. You know, North Korea's latest missile provocation on Sunday came just hours before President Donald Trump on his first foreign visit abroad as president was about to give a major speech. Mm. If you rewind the tape to back to 2009, 
North Korea's first major provocation against President Obama came on April 5th, just hours before Obama was about to give his first major foreign policy speech on a visit to Prague on a world without nuclear weapons. The primary target or audience is the United States, and I think North Korea's uh, ratcheting up of the tension, escalation, is intended to tell the world, hey, we are able to create mm. massive headaches for you. Okay, we'll take a step back, and then a false sense of relief sets in. So there's always a room, window of opportunity to go back to negotiations. I see. Well, Mr. Polak, you know Professor Lee has been on my program several times, and we know he has really good memories. So what he said about history is really thought-provoking mm -hmm. at this point. What do you think the target is really for North Korea's latest uh, missile test, or is it multiple targeted? Well, it's multiple targeted because North Korea wants a capability to be able to threaten not only the United States and U.S. forces, but all of its neighbors, including China. Mm -hmm. uh, at the same time, I think it's very important to note that the North Koreans are on an accelerated development program, an intensive testing program to refine these capabilities. Uh, Kim Jong-un claims now that they will be ready to deploy uh, the missile that he tested uh, just several days ago. Mm. Uh, and that may, that may in fact be the case. It may be an idle threat. Their capabilities economically and otherwise are not unlimited. But what they are doing is doubling down on their bet on nuclear weapons and on missiles. Mm. And it creates the potential for great risk. Their uh, the argument is, Mr. Polak, if I could remi remind you, that the U.S. does not provide them with an opportunity for security. Well, it, the security of the state of the North Korean state ultimately depends uh, really much more on whether or not, in a longer run sense, mm. North Korea can evolve in a way that gives its people decent opportunities, uh, retains the loyalty of the elites, right. that, but they have an incentive in North Korea to claim that it is really the American threat that drives them, even though that is useful for a variety of purposes, both domestic and international. No matter what exactly is the purpose, because probably only Mr. Kim knows it exactly. Having said that, though, the fact is there are missiles being fired, and there are different opinions as to what exactly is the target of those missions. Mm -hmm. And Professor Oh from South Korea, I want to ask you, what about that window opportunity Professor Lee seemed to suggest it earlier, that probably your new president even have a bigger reason for reaching out to the North as a result of the latest tests and also interactions between the North and the South after election? Well, he has a great opportunity to talk to North Korea, but he has no program with him because his program is reflection of Kim Dae-jung's sunshine policy or Ro Mui-hun's continued gesture of peaceful uh, interactions between two countries. The first thing he was talking about is the reopening of Gaesong com um, uh, industrial compound, mm. which is an old story again. Now, North Korea is saying new messages to everybody. Get involved with our arms race in terms of nuclear power crisis here. I mean, I'm sorry, nuclear missile crisis here. So uh, Moon Jae-in, if he want to talk to North Korea, you better have a new program for them, new content, new stories, new uh, you know packages that he can uh, show to North Korea to deal with this problem. But you know, Professor, oh, sometimes old tricks do, va do magic, depending on the timing. Well, uh, well, uh, but this time it changed. North Korea is shooting missiles, so it, 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 the missiles are now now ballistic missiles. It's, it's a different kind of you know missiles that they've been shooting a decade ago. So the, the Moon Jae-in must change to incorporate new environment in, in, in the North-South relations. So there should be a new program to deal with it. Mm, Professor Lee, agree with that? Oh, pardon yes. me. Um, yes, well, old tricks can do magic for the intended target, Kim Jong-un, that is. The revival of the old sunshine policy of virtual unconditional aid would be wonderful from Kim Jong-un's point of view, probably the best of uh, all worlds. While South Korea pumps in cash into North Korea's state coffers, the United States and the international community continue down the track of only half-hearted sanctions. That is an agreeable 
uh, circumstance for the North Korean leadership in the short term. However, in the long term, of course, North Korea seeks to gain the credibil credibility, the capacity to nuke Seattle or mm. Washington, D.C., and to be able to, uh, uh, to be in a position of strength mm. in extorting more aid and concessions from the United States. Buying time, it seems that what Professor Lee is trying to suggest, and also try to get yourself stronger while you are still in a crisis, that's what he suggests, the logic behind the DPRK thinking. But uh, Mr. Gao here in Beijing, China has always been playing this very tricky role. It is a go-betweener among all the parties, at least between South and North, United States and North. But at the same time, China is also a player, important one in the region. It is also China's own security that we are talking about, just in the neighborhood and their war history. So at this point, what can China do? I mean, China certainly is not for military action, no. but if the North continue to provoke, it puts China in a very difficult corner. I think uh, if we look at all the parties uh, surrounding this issue, uh, the United States has had a lot of change of mind. Just recently they mm -hmm. say they have lost the strategic patience, but now it seems that they want to do the patience thing again. On the Chinese side, we have been consistent. We have been always advocating peaceful negotiation, dialogue, mm. direct talk between DPRK and, okay. and the United States. All right, States, but Johnson is almost waving his hand <laughs> while you're saying that. Yeah. He's very diplomatic to be polite. Uh, but I guess what he's trying to say, and the question really is, Mr. Gao, I'm sure you know this very sophisticatedly, that is, where can the talk begin? Yeah, thank you. What well, does it give it to us, yeah. any parties? for the talk to begin? Now, first of all, uh, if we look at EPRK, they have been consistent all these years. Every time when we talk, they eventually emerge stronger and more abrasive in their nuclear weapon program as well as the launch vehicle program. And this time, I think, all the other countries will have no other choice but to condemn the yeah. conduct of DPRK through the United Nations and Security Council. And on Tuesday, UN Security Council is having another emergency meeting. Absolutely. Possibly more sanctions can be talked about and debated. And thereafter, I think, there will be no other choice but for China and the United States really to sit down and look at each other very closely, compare notes as to why and how these two countries can work together. Without close cooperation between China and the United States, the DPRK nuclear weapon program, the launch vehicle program mm. will not be solved satisfactorily. It requires full-scale, complete, seamless cooperation may, between may China and the United States. May I just follow up just a little bit, uh, briefly from you, uh, Mr. Gao, because Chinese opinion is very important here. Uh, China also say, we are not the direct player here. You, North Korea, you, United States, you guys talk. We can facilitate all kinds of possibilities for you guys to talk. Yeah. So why are you saying U.S. and China has to talk to one that, another? That, that is the official position of the Chinese government right now. And I think the Chinese government has all the reason to come up with that position. In reality, it mm. may not make the circle around. Why? China is a party to this whole conflict. Mm. Uh, the nuclear weapons are based in areas very close to the Chinese uh, border you know and any conflagration out of that will be a major disaster to the Chinese side of the equation, to the Chinese people on the Chinese side of mm. the border too. So China is not no party to this conflict. China is very much a direct party to the conflict. And China sometimes say, I do not have the key to solve the problem. Which is true. In many cases, even if you do not have a key, you need to contribute to solving the problem. Mm. Having the key or not is not the real issue. Mm. You need to break the Mr. door Gao. open even without the key. Mr. Gao got fired up today. Oh, okay, uh, what about you, Mr. Polak? <laughs> where can the talk begin? Well, the, the most important thing right now is, in my view, not immediate talks with North Korea. The most important thing is a close alignment of all the other affected states, including China, mm. uh, so that there is, if you will, something of a united front. You have to create a situation where North Korea does not have added political space, economic space, yeah. and the like. Now, this is hard to do, but not impossible. But frankly, this is where China, although it might prefer a mediator role, 
it really cannot anymore. The expectations yeah. are running high, okay. particularly now as, as these You missiles. say yourself, it is hard to do, but not impossible. Okay, so what are the things that is making it possible? You just already mentioned, but what are the things that is possibly making it impossible? How to overcome those things, uh, Mr. Polak? You have to be frank with us yeah. here. Well, I think that, that there's always a risk of friction among all these parties. Yeah, particularly and that, China and United States, well, for example. Right, right. But the, but the question here for China is, can China look at this situation and not put it exclusively or dominant in dominant terms as part of a U.S.-China strategic competition? The issues here are very specific mm. to what North Korea chooses to do and how it chooses to act. Mm. Uh, this has been an issue. For example, the U.S. decision to deploy the THAAD missile batteries, it's not aimed at China. It has everything to do with North Korea. Well, and that's something that, again, the leadership in China refuses to accept. But that has real consequences. Well, it's interesting that you talk about all of these points. I think it all has a lot to do with the so-called lack of strategic trust, Professor Lee. Now, in the United States, between China and the United States, and meanwhile, even about the THAAD thing, you could see it's the dual possibilities. Uh, and also, it's in the hands of the U.S. military rather than in South Korea. There are disputes between Seoul and Washington as well. I don't want to go into all of these piles of uh, questions, but this is one of those many questions, I guess, that is happening among countries of the earlier six parties. And any of those could create distrust. Uh, Professor Lee, so if Mr. Pollack talking about united front, I mean, in the short term, is it ever possible? Um, well, I mean, a big sigh from you. Time. I got it, sir. Diplomacy <laughs> takes time. Sanctions <laughs> take time. You know, sanctions are not self-executing. Like domestic law enforcement, it takes a lot of time and effort. So, in the short term, there will be a lot of policy incoherence. Um, the U.S. will call for tougher sanctions. Some other nations may come on board. China may uh, continue with its coal import ban may freeze some North Korean accounts. At the same time, those measures are unlikely to yield a major change in North Korean behavior. Mm -hmm. So pundits, critics will say sanctions don't work. They only hurt the people, not the regime. And we'll have this kind of debate for the foreseeable future while North Korea advances its nuclear and missile weapons program. So the problem will continue to be with us. In, in the long term, however, if the U.S. pulled out completely, abandoned South Korea, as the U.S. has twice uh, in the 20th century, abandoning Korea, and served South Korea on a silver platter to North Korea, then you would have a communized Korean peninsula. It wouldn't really matter to South Korea because it would cease to exist. Japan would be horrified. China's strategic interests right. would be jeopardized as well. So we don't want to go there to that very bleak alternative future. But I think, again, we'll have to come to a new crisis point for this fundamental mm. North Korean nuclear threat, this problem to be resolved. Mm. Professor Lee is not only a historian, but also a futurist as well about all of these possibilities. Uh, Professor Oh, I want to go to you. Uh, South Korea, of course, is forever the party more directly than the others being inf uh, affected. Oh, well, we don't have many cards to play with, again, because with the mm -hmm. new president, uh, who, has, who seems to be lost at the moment, or what to do with this mis missile crisis. In fact, in South Korea, news media is not reporting a lot of missile crisis anymore because they are now focusing on domestic problems. So uh, we need to, uh, I think China and the United States have to work closely together to find out some kind of immediate solution, like, uh, uh, you know, a unifying front for a while, at least, yeah. to say something, to give an assurance to the region that, United States and China on the, on, are on the same boat. So okay. that, that's very important to us, I think, at the moment. We only have one minute to go, and we got four wonderful panelists with us. I want all of you, gentlemen, if you can, two or three sentences to wrap up your opinion on the latest crisis, quote unquote, and where can we go from here? Professor Lee, you go first, very briefly. Don't call me a dictator, but if I were Kim Jong-un, I would be doing exactly what he has been doing. All the condemnation, rhetorical opprobrium coming out of the UN Security Council and various mm. capitals don't really matter. What matters is my ability to be a factor, to be taken seriously by the bigger powers in the region. Mm. You're always to the point, Professor Lee. What about you, Professor Oh? 
sum up? Well, we have to disengage from North Korean nuclear politics at the moment, and we have to strengthen our uh, relationship between allies. So uh, four parties or five parties, excluding North Korea, is more important than talking to North Korea at this moment. Thank you, Professor Oh. Mr. Polak. Uh, I think that this is a very sobering uh, moment for Moon Jae-in, the new president of South Korea. Uh, he had hopes of creating a Korea at the center of this whole process. He can't do that under these circumstances. I don't, uh, although he could make strategic blunders that put him in a very disadvantageous situation. So if anything, it will reinforce the necessity of a mm. close relationship with the United States as he tries, in some ways at least, to try to see if China is prepared to rebuild relations with South Korea. Everybody coming up with their own perspectives. And finally, Mr. Gao, I think uh, the situation uh, on the Korean Peninsula should uh, develop in a situation of five versus one, that is, five countries versus DPRK. And uh, eventually, DPRK should lose any illusion that they can play one country against the other. However, the final solution of the DPRK nuclear weapon program should also leave enough respect and decency for DPRK so that they can survive and have a sense of security after the nuclear weapon program has right. been solved satisfactorily. That will take time. That will take a lot of wisdom, courage, and vision.